welcome back to my channel or if you're new here thanks for tuning in and welcome back to another day of love mess today is a vlog first of all i know i just gotta address the dramatic stuff happening on my face right now <laughs> i just filmed my diy advent calendar that my husband picked out for me and that's already up it went up on friday so i'll put it here if you want to see it it's very dramatic but um check out that video if you want to see how that turned how that went <laughs> i was gonna say how it turned out but this is how it turned out anyways today we are doing a full-on cooking video a little bit of cooking mostly baking actually because one of my other hobbies passions whatever is baking and i i bake a lot of like cakes and stuff and treats and desserts that's one of, my, one of my other things i like to do besides makeup so i thought i would film today while i make my treat boxes so every year i make treat boxes for our close friends and i thought i would film it and show you guys some of the ideas and the recipes that i'm going to be using to create all the things in the treat box i'm going to be sharing with you guys my grandpa's sugar cookie recipe which i kind of don't want to but also why not share the love because these things are amazing if you ever have a chance and have time to make them. Definitely check out the recipe. I'm going to put all the recipes and everything in this video in the description box. So if you guys want to try any of these out, check out those recipes down there. I'm also obviously going to be roughly explaining what I'm doing. The, the sugar cookies, like my grandpa's recipe, I will like explain that one more in detail. But a lot of the other stuff is going to be relatively go quick quick because i have a lot of different things to make so this vlog would be so long if i explain every single step but roughly i will explain what i'm doing for most of it so i'm going to be making my grandpa's sugar cookie recipe i'm going to make some cake pops cake pops sometimes i have a hard time saying that i don't know why <laughs> some monster cookies i don't know if you guys have ever had monster cookies before that were like my favorite <sighs> cookie but it's it's not like a holiday cookie but i'm making them anyways because they're so good that i want to share them with people i'm also going to be making like peanut butter cookies with a little hershey kiss in the middle lots of cookies <laughs> but uh also we're gonna do some little chocolates and oreo fudge i think that's everything oh and maybe brownies maybe i think so i don't know i haven't really quite decided on the brownies yet it's a lot <laughs> that's why i'm saying like some of this stuff i'm gonna have to kind of go through pretty quickly but if you guys have any questions about anything that i do just leave a comment and i will definitely answer anybody's comments i'm pretty good at like getting back to everyone's comments if you have a question about anything that i do in the video before we get to the baking because i'm going to be doing this for quite some time i want to go ahead and do a crock pot recipe so i'm going to be making a potato soup for dinner Again, recipes below, but I love to make this potato soup. It is one of my favorite things to make, especially when I have a crap ton of potatoes. I don't know if you can see over there, but I have a lot of potatoes right now. So I think it would be really good to throw this stuff in the crock pot and it'll be ready um, when I'm starving after making all these streets. Hello, it's me from the end of the video. I um, got in a little over my head trying to do this all in one day and in one vlog. So I just want to say that Everything is still coming that I talked about at the beginning of this vlog. However, I'm just going to make this vlog the focus of the my grandpa's sugar cookies and the potato soup. Everything else, all the smaller little individual treats, I'm going to do a separate vlog on. So if you guys want to see that, that's going to be coming either next week or sometime this week. I prefer to do it next week on Sunday because that's when I'm putting vlog videos out since this is a makeup channel. <laughs> But it is coming, so you guys can see the final treat boxes and everything. Subscribe if you want to see that. Today is just the focus on the cookies and stuff. I'm sorry, it was just a lot, and I talk a lot, and it's hard to cut things down. So, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Continue on past Lindsay. <laughs> I also have all of my ingredients for everything over here, so I'm going to show you guys everything that I got. Kind of like a little grocery haul <laughs> i like i like when people do like grocery hauls so i thought i would throw it in here i'm gonna do my best not to shake the camera but i'm sorry if it gets any if it gets shaky at any point okay so first of all treat boxes these are from wilton there is three in here and they are well let me open them and show you how big they are okay here's how big they are they're pr they're pretty good size you can fit quite a bit of stuff in here so i think these are really good if you're making like quite a few different treats or larger things like like i am gonna be doing so 
there's that. I got a few packs of those. We have some cake pop sticks and some little cake pop uh, baggies. I also have some extra clear baggies, which I don't think I'm going to be using those. They're uh, just plain ones with little ties. And I have some that are a little bit bigger. I think I'm going to use these ones instead. I found these little Ziploc bags that have the Christmas decorations on them. And I just thought they were so cute. And there's different designs. So I'll probably be using those instead of the clear ones. I can always use these clear ones anytime throughout the year. Back here I have a bunch of different sprinkles. And then I have all my cookie cutters. And then I have um, some little silicone molds these are gonna be so cute for little chocolates and then I have a larger one I bought these last year and never used them because they I bought them like on sale after Christmas and yeah so I'm excited to use those I have some of these little curly chocolates I don't know if I'm gonna use them but they're there <laughs> Oreos for the Oreo fudge all of the chocolate chips <laughs> these are all semi-sweet just like regular chocolate chips. Then I have some of these, which I don't know if I'm gonna use these, but they're skinny dark chocolate baking melts. I bought a, dev a bunch of different candy melts because I just don't know which ones I'm going to use or what to use. I also have all of these baking bars because I wanted white chocolate to melt, but the store didn't have any white chocolate chips. They were all out. So I bought a bunch of these in hopes maybe I can use them. I think I can. I also have some other chocolate bars. I'm a baker. I always have this stuff on hand. So a lot of this was actually in my cabinet. And then I bought one more thing. This is the make and melt microwavable tray, which I thought was interesting. I didn't even know this was a thing, but it could be um, handy for anyone who wants to do these kinds of things with your kids because it's just pop in the microwave kind of thing and it's on a tray. It's ready to go, you know? So we'll see how that goes if I need it. I just have some extra sugar and flour back here I'm going to be using for some of the cookies, which I already pre-made, which we'll talk about in a second. And then I have these. I'm just going to use these to make the little peanut butter cookies because my sugar cookies are going to be a lot more intricate. So I use these. These are easier, faster. And then I have some uh, brownie mix. Then we have some uh, different assorted chocolate chips. That, again, I don't know if I'm going to use these, but they're there if I need them. I have these Funfetti vanilla cake flavored morsels, which, fun, that is so cute, and I don't know if I'm going to use them, but it also says you can melt these down, so we'll see. Then I have some peanut butter chips, which honestly I probably am not going to use, but I like to have them on hand anyways. Some M&Ms for the monster cookies, kisses for the peanut butter cookies, some peanut butter for the monster cookies, some marshmallow fluff for the fudge, lots of butter cream cheese for actually for the soup <laughs> and then over here I have the stuff that I've like already prepared last night because I um, knew I was gonna be baking a lot today <laughs> so I wanted to go ahead and get this stuff ready actually it's better to get this stuff ready ahead of time anyways this is just the cake uh, it's literally just this box cake French vanilla follow the directions put it in the oven boom done and this is gonna be for the cake pops and then I have the sugar cookie dough and I have it separated in two it's the same recipe just one has more flour so that I can roll it out and use cookie cutter and the other one is just like the standard regular sugar cookie sugar cookie recipe that I want to share with you guys in case you don't want to use it for like Christmas we're going to be doing these first of the baking stuff I want to get these out of the way and then we'll be doing everything else because these ones take the most time <laughs> and they're the most delicious but I will tell you guys how I made the cookie dough it's very specific I will get into that in a few minutes but first, let's start on the potato soup. I'll show you guys how I do my potato soup. It's super easy, and if you're anything like me, you might have these ingredients at home already. You just need potatoes, carrots, cream cheese, chicken, chicken stock or chicken bouillon, whatever you like to use. I use these because they're just easier to store. <laughs> they don't take up much space. A can of cream of chicken, onion powder. I have some chopped onions because I don't feel like chopping actual onions, even though these don't taste like as good. I just hate cutting onions, so I'm gonna use those. Some paprika, some garlic powder, cayenne pepper, because I like a little bit of spice, but if you don't, you can skip it. And some ground black pepper, and that's what you need for the soup. You can also add cheese, which I'm definitely going to do once it's finished. First thing I like to do is I like to take the cream of chicken soup and I put it into my crock pot along with three cans of water. That's just using the 
cream of chicken can. Then I add my chicken bouillon. I usually add about two of these or I usually add about three of the smaller cubes. If you get the smaller cubes, these ones are the ones that I'm using, the Nora brand. These ones are a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna add all of my seasonings. I really just do this to taste. Um, <laughs> You just gotta play around with it. I kind of just dump what I want in there, honestly. It's really up to you how you want to do that. It's all gonna be your personal preference. I like to put the cream of chicken and the liquid ingredients in first, and I like to let it warm up as I'm chopping the potatoes up. I like to leave my skins on. You can peel them if you want to. I like, obviously I take off the bad parts, but also I chop the carrots. And then once those are done, I put them in my crock pot. I have a tiny crock pot. This is only like three quarts, I think. It's very small. It's just me and my husband, so it's okay. I would like a bigger one, which actually, we're, you know, we bought one for Black Friday, so that's coming, which is awesome. But for now, I just have a three quart crock pot. So everything I'm using size-wise fits in this one, but if you have a bigger one, you can totally just add more potatoes, carrots, whatever. My crock pot gets very full when I use everything that I have here. The cream cheese, we're gonna put in an hour before it's finished cooking, so you can just leave this out on the counter and let it just kind of get to room temperature until it's ready to be put in. So super easy, it's basically just dump everything in, you know, like any other crock pot recipe. Let it cook on high for three hours to four hours, or on low for six to eight, and then it will be done and ready for you at the end of the day, which I'm so excited to have later. <laughs> okay guys, now that we have the potato soup going and everything, let's talk about this cookie dough. First of all, let me just explain, this is the best sugar cookie recipe ever. They're not your ordinary like sugar cookies. They are very fluffy, very soft, and very sugary. These are the sugar cookies I personally grew up with and my grandpa actually taught me how to make these and I am so excited and happy every year that I like know how to make this recipe because it's definitely an old school recipe and it takes quite a bit of time and dedication to uh to prepare it so i really only make them about once a year and christmas time is the perfect time to do it especially when i do these treat boxes because it it does take quite a bit of time to make them but it's worth it i promise they are so wait till you guys see them they're so good let me start by saying this recipe makes about seven to eight dozen cookies so just keep that in mind if you want to cut it in half or whatnot. This makes a lot of cookies. <laughs> but if you're anything like my family, we end up like doubling or tripling the recipe so that we can give a thousand cookies to people. Not a literal thousand, but it's a lot. So first thing you do, obviously get all your ingredients together. You need plenty of flour. I would get a whole bag, lots of white sugar. You need brown sugar, three eggs, baking soda, vanilla, buttermilk, or you can do what I'm doing. I'm gonna be using a substitute because I just, never have buttermilk in my cabinet to be honest but these other things i always have in my cabinet and you will also need uh one and a half cups of lard <laughs> if you can find that which i've never been able to find it um, but i also never really look super hard you can also use butter as a substitute it'll come out just as great maybe not quite as great but they come out really good still <laughs> so it's really important to follow these directions to get the correct consistency i did like i said i separated the dough at the end and added more flour to half of it so that you can roll it out and cut it out like cookie like sugar cookie cutouts and then the other one is the traditional just circle cookie with the sugar well traditional to me <laughs> um but it's just like a round cookie that's very fluffy and delicious so the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna mix the butter or the lard, <laughs> whichever one you have, with these sugars. You're gonna wanna use one of these pastry cutters. You can get it on Amazon. And basically this is used to mix in butter that's not like melted or anything. Your butter does not need to be softened at all. I mean, you don't really want it like frozen, but it doesn't need to be softened. So you just take the butter, put it in your pan and you have the pastry cutter and you're gonna cut down into the butter with the white sugar until you get it all mixed up really nice and good. It should be kind of end up being this consistency. And then you're gonna add the brown sugar and then keep mixing it again with the same I mean you just use this tool throughout the whole mixing process so after you have the butter mixed into the sugars really well then you're gonna take your eggs and you're put it in a separate bowl and whip these up until they're just slightly fluffy not really like too extreme just put in a little bit of extra time mixing them if you're using a buttermilk substitute I would go ahead and prepare that at this time like I used a buttermilk substitute where I put 
heavy cream and I mixed in about a teaspoon of white vinegar. This is probably the best substitute for this specific recipe for buttermilk because it's really important to have that vinegar in the milk. Basically it's going to be a reaction with the baking soda when we get to that part. So mix it together and you're going to set it aside just for a few minutes while we mix in the eggs to the butter and sugar. So mix in the eggs about one third at a time as if you were putting one egg in at a time. It's just easier to mix them all together until everything is mixed up really well. And then we're gonna go back to our buttermilk or substitute one tablespoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of vanilla. And you're gonna put these into the buttermilk mixture at the same time. I'm not sure if this is like really makes a difference, but when I was making this with my grandpa, he said you had to do this. I don't know. So just listen to the guy. And then you're gonna go ahead and mix in the buttermilk mixture into your larger bowl. Once all of that is combined, the next part is add enough flour until the dough is stiff. Now, the recipe doesn't have a specific number of how much flour you should add in, but I will tell you that I added about six and a half cups into mine. This is going to be very dependent on the humidity of where you live and everything. You're just gonna want to add enough flour in there. I add two cups at a time until I get to six cups, and then I start adding in a half a cup at a time until I feel that it's the right consistency. It's gonna get messy. It is you're gonna get it on your hands. It's, it's gonna get messy just so you know <laughs> It's gonna get everywhere and for my recipe. I ended up using about six and a half cups Just use your best judgment um, <laughs> Looking at how my dough looks. It's still gonna be a little sticky But you should be able to start being able to get a ball formed a little bit Don't let this part scare you too much. It will most likely still come out fine But you don't want to add too much flour because then the cookies won't be as fluffy as you want them for the traditional sugar cookie style of this recipe. Now if you want to do cookie cutouts like for Christmas or whatnot, you're just going to keep adding more flour. I added about a cup extra flour to half of my dough. So if you're doing the whole dough, I would go a half a cup at a time until it's quite stiff. It shouldn't be too sticky and you can definitely start forming a ball. It's gonna be a little bit more stiff than uh, the cookie dough tubes, like the Pillsbury cookie dough tubes that you can get that it's pre-made. It's gonna be a little bit more stiff than that. Just a tiny bit, not too much. <laughs> and the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna set these in your refrigerator for six to eight hours. I always do this recipe the night before and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. Very, 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 very important to let it sit in the refrigerator for at least six to eight hours. Obviously, now it's the next day and my cookie dough is ready. It's been refrigerated all night long. If you have your separators like mine, you wanna keep these at a cooler temperature as you are working with them because as the dough gets warmer, it becomes a little bit more difficult to work with. So uh, I recommend like using maybe half the dough at a time and putting the rest in the fridge as you're working with it. I'm first going to do the traditional just regular circle cookies and then we're going to do the cutouts after that. So I'm going to put that stiffer dough in the fridge until we're ready for it. <laughs> Alright, we're going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or about 175 degrees Celsius in my case. <laughs> this looks like a small bowl but it's going to make a lot of cookies. <laughs> I'm just going to get my pans ready. I also have a cooling rack which is really helpful so have that on the side when we're ready for it. Then I'm gonna line my cookie sheets with some parchment paper. This one has a reusable one, so I'm gonna keep that. Parchment paper on the other ones. Quick note, you are definitely gonna wanna use parchment paper because we're gonna be putting sugar on top of the dough and the dough is also gonna have flour on it, so it's gonna make it easier to reuse the pans because remember this recipe makes six to eight, seven dozen cookies. So you're gonna be reusing the pans. I also suggest to have like three. If you have two, that's better. But if you only have one, it's really gonna make this process very annoying because you can't prepare any of the cookies as some of them are baking. And you don't wanna put the dough on a super hot pan, so you would have to wait for it to cool down. So it's best to have three cookie sheets. That way, as one is cooking, you can prepare one and you have one that's cooling down in the middle. 
you know, it's like a rotation thing, you know? It also really does help if you have somebody to help you do this, just because it does make so many cookies. To have somebody um, grab the cookies out of the oven as they are finishing it up and everything, it really does help to have an extra person. The cookies only take like six to eight minutes to cook, so it does help to have that second person. But I'm a pro at this point, so I got it down. Okay, you're gonna take a bowl, you're gonna put uh, some flour in it. It doesn't have to be a big bowl. Keep your flour handy though, because you might need more. And then if you have a shaker, um, of some sort that you can put the white sugar in it's really gonna be helpful I'm just using a spice bottle like a really cheap spice bottle that I use the spice up in I don't know I just always keep this on hand in case I need it some kind of shaker bottle and then I'm gonna put some sugar in here so we can sprinkle the cookie with sugar on top actually just put all the sugar in a little bag so that it's easier to put it into the shaker bottle Okay, we got our sugar, we got our flour, and then you're gonna want to have like a tablespoon or if you have a little cookie um, scooper. <laughs> I have one, but it's uh, really annoying. I hate using it, it doesn't work right, and I need a new one. So I'm just gonna use a tablespoon. This is what we're gonna use to get the dough out and have our ball. <laughs> All right, now we're ready. Okay, so here goes the process. You're gonna take a scoop of the cookie dough and it should be about, roll it a little bit, and it should be about this size or so. And you're gonna take it and you're gonna roll it in the flour, and then you're gonna place it on the pan. <laughs> you're gonna repeat that process until you fill up the entire pan, three by four, so 12 total. So here's what your pan should look like. I actually made the first two way too big. So if you guys can see, they got <laughs> much smaller. I, I started using about half a tablespoon. So if you have half a tablespoon, that's about the right amount. Unless you want them bigger, you can do them bigger too. Okay, you're gonna take a cup that has a flat surface or something that has a flat surface. It doesn't have to be a cup, but it's usually the easiest thing. So just stick it into the flour and you're gonna take it and you're gonna flatten Every single one. Then you're gonna take your sugar shaker and you're gonna put a really, really good amount of sugar on every single one. Do not be shy with the sugar. These are sugar cookies after all. All right, and this one is ready to go in the oven. Start your timer at about five minutes, the first one that you do, and kind of keep your eye on them and see how they do. That way you know like kind of how much it's gonna take for them to cook for the rest of your batches. Just because everybody's oven is different and these are very sensitive, they cook very quickly, so you do wanna keep your eye on them. So I would start at five minutes and make your way up if you need extra time, that way you can figure out how long they need to cook. Okay, you guys, here are the cookies fresh out of the oven. I'm not sure how much you guys can tell, but they're a little bit golden around the edges, but I don't know if I can do this. If you look at the bottom, they're like just a tiny bit turned, but you don't want them too dark. And they are fluffy and beautiful and delicious. Oh my God, I can't wait to try these. There's our first batch done. They took about seven and a half minutes, almost eight, seven to eight minutes for me in my oven. Let those cool for a second and we'll finish up these. Oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot stop myself. It's been a year. Mm. Mm. These are the best sugar cookies ever. If you like a soft, fluffy cookie, so good. And the best part, they stay soft and fluffy. Mm. All right, guys, so for the cookie cutout dough, I got it out here. It is very firm. <laughs> Probably put flour down first. <laughs> I'm just gonna take the leftover flour here, flour this. Obviously you can do this on your countertop. I just like to do it on parchment paper. We'll just start with that. <laughs> I'm just gonna knead it a little bit here. Then we're gonna roll it out. Okay, 
now you just start cutting them out. Okay guys, just like the regular cookies, we're gonna take all of our cookies that we did and we're gonna sprinkle them with sugar. Unless you want to decorate them with icing or something, you can skip the sugar, but I am not decorating these because a girl don't got time for all days, so I'm just gonna put sugar on them. Ta-da! Okay guys, these are the cutout cookies out of the oven. I wanted to note something that I forgot to say here. These are not uh, co good cookies to do really intricate royal icing cookies on because they are still kind of fluffy. So they kind of have a rounded top in a way. I'm not sure if you guys can tell or not. You can decorate them with like buttercream icing though, but you don't want to put something that's going to be runny on the cookies because they're going to run to the sides because they're kind of beveled. But as you can see, they do hold the shape of the cookie cutter decently well. It's not going to be like, they blow up the tiniest bit, but not too much. Now, if we were to have done it like the other round cookies oh they wouldn't have looked like this <laughs> that's why we added the extra flour to be able to roll it out and make it into this shape so they at least hold the shape a little bit i also wanted to mention that because the regular cookie is uh, much softer it's still a soft cookie the cook the cutouts still end up being a really soft cookie however these are much more fluffier and that's why I showed you guys both ways because this is the way that they are supposed to be made is in the round shape and they get really fluffy. They don't really hold a cutout. You can't really, well, you can't cut them out because <laughs> you can't roll the dough out for this fluffiness. But if you don't mind, I mean, these are still a soft cookie. It's just not as soft and it's fun. I want to eat one. Here's all of the regular cookies. These ones got a tiny bit dark, but they still are completely beautifully edible. Oh my God, look at my oven mitt. It's got flour all over it. <laughs> this is how many half the recipe made. And then, and I've already filled up three pans of the cutout cookies and I still have a lot more. <laughs> so I think total this one's gonna end up being well over six dozen cookies. That was three and a half, almost four. Then I have three, so that's already six dozen, plus I probably have at least four more dozen, three more dozen, three more dozen, probably four more dozen, <laughs> honestly. So this recipe makes a lot, just remember that. <laughs> so that's everything for this sugar cookie recipe. Okay guys, oh shoot, gotta turn Kylo off. <laughs> Just watching uh, one of Kylo Fish's videos. So I actually decided I'm gonna like eat dinner really quick because I got really tired after making all of these cookies. Do you see, do you see all these? Oh my God, look at all the cookies. Wow, they look great, but I'm super hungry. I'm getting really tired. <laughs> But for now, I have the soup done. I forgot to tell you guys that after you put the cream cheese in, let it cook for an hour. And then if you have like a potato smasher, you know, like a mashed potato smasher, put it into the soup like quite a few times and kind of mash some of the potatoes up and it thickens the soup up, but leaves some of them still not smashed, you know? And you get this beautiful, delicious, those are limes. Really yummy, 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 yummy soup. And it ends up being Super delicious. So, we're gonna have some soup. I'm gonna have some soup. Obviously, I gotta put some cheese in. I also have some bacon bits, so I'm gonna put some of those in too. Also, some chives. Ta da! Oh, shh, this is hot. <laughs> Here is the soup. Oh my god, look at that. That looks so delicious. <gasps> Can't wait. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the cookie recipe as well as the potato soup recipe. I'm I'm gonna leave this vlog here because it's already super long. I think it'll be a lot more easier to digest just these two recipes. Still gonna vlog the rest of the stuff that I'm gonna be making, but I'm gonna put it up another day. Maybe I'll put it up on next Sunday for that Sunday vlog. Maybe I'll put it up during the week. I don't know. I would prefer to just do it on Sunday because I'm doing Sunday vlogs. But that's it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Everything's in the description box. And yeah, let me know if you guys try any of these or if you found this interesting, helpful, entertaining, anything. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. And yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.